Starship Vlog. I'm Buck Field. If you follow this channel, you probably know the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop, or TVIW. Over the past 10 years, they have grown, they've gotten more international, new activities, and the organization leadership finally decided to change the name. They selected the Interstellar Research Group to better reflect what they're doing. When I was invited to make a video about the history of the organization, I reached out to Les Johnson, a longtime NASA technologist, engineer, science fiction author, and co-founder of the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop. The story of how TBIW got started involves stolen explosives, official censorship by administration, and the future of humanity and our hopes for it if we survive. Of your background and how you got started in space generally? Well, my background, yeah. Uh, first thing I have to tell you, though, Buck, is in any interview that I do, I have to let people know I'm speaking as Les Johnson, private citizen, because in my day job, I do work for NASA. Mm -hmm. uh, but anything I do for the Interstellar Research Group or did do for the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop or do as my work as an author, I have to do on my own nickel. And so any opinions I express here are just my own, uh, they're of Les Johnson. And it really goes back to 1969 when I was seven years old wearing footy pajamas and was gotten out of bed to watch, uh, I think it was 11 o'clock Eastern time, when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. And then right after that, my older sister let me stay up with her on Friday nights to watch the reruns of Star Trek. And from there, it was, it was all over. I became a space cadet, which is a pretty common story, mm -hmm. I think, in the U.S. for people of my generation. Maybe age 11 or 12. I decided that I wanted to be a physicist, uh, to go work on space stuff. And I think the reason I wanted to do that is because I, I thought you had to be a physicist. And so it, it's, it's kind of, it happened from there. I was, I was converted at a young age. Were you involved initially in the, in the formation of TBIW? The idea for the, for the first meeting came about uh, with three of us. It was uh, me, uh, Robert Kennedy, and Gregory Matloff were in mm -hmm. uh, Aosta, Italy, mm -hmm. at a conference sponsored by the IAA, the International Astronautical Association, on ultra deep space missions. That's the only way they can get approval to have a conference, is if they call interstellar travel ultra deep space flight. Oh. <laughs> and all the, the people in the world who were interested in enabling trips to the stars would go to this meeting. And while we were there, we realized that there were a lot of people in our circles of friends and work colleagues who were interested in the topic who would never have the opportunity to go to Austa, Italy, right, to be in a conference such as this. Sure. So we decided that we would host a meeting. It was supposed to be a one-time thing. One day it was going to be in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, which is a couple hundred miles from where I live here in Alabama, mm -hmm. uh, where Robert Kennedy lives, and Greg Matloff is in New York City. Uh, but we had some friends and engineers uh, that Robert had at, that worked at Oak Ridge National Laboratories and were engineers in that area, and I working in the Huntsville area. And so we organized a one-day symposium. It was free, and it was just our friends. We mm -hmm. chipped in for food, brought in pizza, the whole nine yards, had a wonderful day, learned a lot, uh, just had a, a tremendous amount of energy. There were about 35 people there. And at the end of that day, I was in my hotel room getting ready to go to sleep because I was exhausted as one of the organizers of this one-time meeting when there was a knock on my door uh, telling me that there was another meeting of the group that was happening right then at 9 o'clock after an exhausting day and that I needed to come over. So I went over and I came in and Robert was there, Greg was there, and all the other people were there. And they said, this has too much energy, too much enthusiasm for it to be a one-off. We need to do this again. And we need this to- This was still, this was at the hotel? This was at the hotel, at the conference room. We'd all, actually, I think Robert may have, Robert Kennedy may have paid the fee for that room. Um, it was there that everyone decided in this, this group of friends from all over the Tennessee Valley, stretching mm -hmm. from- essentially the Knoxville, Tennessee, Oak Ridge, Tennessee area, all the way down here to Huntsville, that we would do another meeting. And that became the nonprofit group, uh, the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop, mm -hmm. which then has gone on to host several uh, meetings that have been attended with folks from all over the world now. How did you start uh, uh, popularizing this and letting people know that it existed? Well, it started out, uh, the first one was just, it was just our email list, and our friends, right? Sure. Oh, for okay. the next one, uh, we had uh, we expanded that friends list, and we sent out a call for papers, 
and mm -hmm. actually solicited uh, papers to be presented and decided to make it a little bit more formal. Although a lot of the people who participated in the meeting were also friends who go to science fiction conventions, uh. which are very different from professional conferences. They're very social events. And was, that, so, was that like the Bain, the Bain books tie-in? That's, that's exactly how that happened. You're, you're exactly okay. right. So, so what year is this? Oh, boy. We started in 2011, um, okay. so 10 years ago. And the next meeting was 2013, I think, and it was in Huntsville. We mm -hmm. basically just turned it a little bit more formal, had a call for papers, had a more structured meeting, but because of the fact that a lot of people came out of science fiction fandom, we incorporated some of that into it also. And then the group in Oak Ridge decided they wanted to uh, to make it you know more of a thing and do some education work, so they incorporated it as a nonprofit, formed a board of directors. The circle of people involved continued to grow. It became more professional on the side of the board of directors. And they now do all kinds of, uh, the organization now does all kinds of things like sponsor student scholarship, all, all sorts of, of educational outreach uh, that the group does in addition to the meeting. But the meetings are still the signature events. Why were you so motivated to work on this? Well, <laughs> that's hard. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Um, I'm one of those people that has a very difficult time separating work from fun. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy my job during the day, designing spaceships, an advanced propulsion system is kind of fun, right? <laughs> yeah. And then that's um, a nice job to get if you could get it. <laughs> and and then that that introduces me to people who have similar weird habits of space is is a hobby as well as a job. Uh, if your listeners uh, and watchers have not uh, heard of Dr. Robert Forward, you need to go a couple of places. You need to look at his science fiction books, which are awesome, mm -hmm. or science science fiction, and you need to do some uh, Google Scholar research. I mean, there was, was a, a uh, there was a paper that just came out recently that uh, I don't know if you follow uh, Sabina Hoff Hofstetler. I, I have a book by her, Lost in the Math. I think yes. it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read her, I've read one of her books anyway. I just saw this uh, YouTube video. What she thought was the first good follow up to uh, Alcubierre's paper. Ah, okay. You'd probably be interested to check that out on YouTube. She had a lot of really interesting things to say in her book about the state of theoretical physics. Mm -hmm. And if, for folks who think that might be a dry topic, it's not the way she writes it. It's a very accessible book. I would encourage people to go to go read her book. What would you say is your favorite memory building TBIW? Meeting me was the highlight. I, absolutely. It was, it was right up there at the top, me. Buck. <laughs> um, of course, the excitement of that first meeting. I would say another favorite memory is the second Huntsville meeting in which we had two U.S. congressmen attend oh, to show yeah. their support for the work we were doing for interstellar travel. And a three-star Air Force general uh, was on mm -hmm. a panel at that meeting. It was General Quast. So that was a, a, uh, a very exciting time uh, because there, there's some people showing a lot of interest in, in what's happening. And, and the thing I'm so proud of with the group is it's not just an engineering meeting. I mean, we have... Uh, lay people, we have uh, uh, sociologists, philosophers, uh, science fiction authors. We, we try to make the meetings uh, accessible to everybody because if we're going to go to the stars, it's going to involve the whole culture. And uh, there are a lot of people who are not engineers and scientists that are going to contribute to making it happen. Other than uh, Robert Forward, do you have any uh, particular interstellar heroes? Uh, I got to meet Freeman Dyson and talk to oh. Freeman about uh, Project Orion and how all that came about and, and learned that for their tests, they, they, he, he claimed they couldn't get approval to use as much explosive as they wanted. And I guess back in the late 50s, it was easier for people on a military base to get access to explosives than it is now because he said they went on a midnight run and procured some to get better uh, performance out of their testing and were successful in doing that. Um, so just fun things like that. I've, I've been really fortunate. Last official question. Yes. Uh, your, your hopes for our species in space. Wow. Our hopes are, well, you know, I hope I, I, it's hard not to have an American centric view of this. Um, and given the turmoil that's gone on in the world and in the U S the last year, three years, four years, whatever. I just would like to see us come together where we can be civil and work together for common goals and not bring politics into everything we do. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'd like to see uh, a return to the day when uh, people who have the same visions and goals for their children, which I think people on all sides of the spectrum, political spectrum do, can get together and say, yeah, we have, may, may have different ways we want to get to the end, but let's work together to make tomorrow a better place.